How is it people start these things? I'm making my dream game. That's how like 9 out of 10 devlogs on YouTube start. And then 9 out of 10 times, their dream game is almost invariably some Stardew Valley inspired farming game. Not knocking that, it's a good game. Anyway, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm making my dream game too. But it's not Stardew Valley, it's uh, all I want to do is a uh, galaxy scale space adventure RPG with life sim elements and an immersive narrative. You know, keeping it simple. And I hate the way I sound when I'm reading from a script, so open parentheses, improv the rest of the video, close parentheses. Right. So I've got a devlog, no, changelog? Changelog. Yeah, changelog, devlog, whatever. I've got a changelog open in front of me, so we're going to start, actually, we're going to go right back to the very beginning of, uh, of my project here. Um, check out 001. 001, not much to it. Uh, once we get to 003, I won't have to check out things anymore because I do there are releases on github you can actually download the windows build of 003 and from 005 onwards I think uh, I think that's where I started doing uh, Mac and uh, Linux builds as well uh, anyway we will run the example for 001 there's really not that much to it if we uh, tab over to the code real quick this is all it is so it's just loading uh, the Bevy instance. I'm using the Bevy uh, game engine in the Rust programming language. This is just going to load up a Bevy window with the default plugins and not really do anything else once it's finished compiling. Compiling, uh, if you do want to download the code uh, for my game or for like any other Bevy game that's source available, um, compiling the first time always takes a little bit longer. And since I'm checking out an older version here, it took a little bit longer than it usually does for me there. Once you compile it a, a another time, it's, it's much quicker. That's all it is, by the way. It's a blank screen. That's version 001. I don't know why I typed this as version 001, but I did. It's, um, yeah, I just wanted, because I'm brand new to like game development at all, and I'm brand new to Rust, I'm brand new to Bevy. I chose Bevy and Rust. Why? Why did I choose them? Oh, right, yeah, because it felt most familiar to me. As like, I, I come from a, I, I'm a, I am a programmer. I've never used Rust. Uh, I've never used Bevy, but I am a programmer. So, Rust being well, Bevy being written directly in this environment, the uh, the code editor, rather than having like the visual representation of the game on screen where you're like um, moving nodes around and stuff like that. This is more familiar to me. It felt more familiar to me. It felt more comfortable to me. And I'm very happy like dealing in code like this. This is going to get a lot bigger in uh, in just a second. We do have to close the game here. And uh, we will get to check out version 0 0.0.2, which there's not a lot to. Uh, again, we won't run it from here. I'm actually going to run 003 instead, because as I say, from 003 onwards, there are releases you can download on the GitHub page. Um, what 002 does is it spawns a spaceship and it adds uh, the player sprite, it adds a camera that uh, the camera needs to exist, essentially. Uh, so let's take a look. Yeah, we've got ship as a separate module here, which uh, has thrust and rotation values. It also has, uh, there's a mistake, actually, it's back in main because my code is badly organized at this point in time. So we spawn all the stuff here in the setup function, which runs on startup. And then there's a ship flight system, which actually comes from the ship module over here, because I don't know anything about Bevy plugins at this point, apparently. Uh, so we run that setup, and that spawns the uh, the camera bundle, camera 2D bundle, and it spawns the ship. And the ship has a sprite. The sprite, uh, by the way, is just this. It's uh, from Kenny's assets, kenny.nl. Um, I'm not an artist. I suck at drawing, so uh, I haven't done any of my own art yet. But I do want to eventually, uh, mainly because like I'm gonna run out of like useful free art. Uh, so yeah, I gotta. I'm gonna have to learn to draw, and it's got a rigid body dynamic. These are coming from the Rapier Physics Engine, Rapier 2D Collider, uh, about 50 meters. The reason that's that 50 there is. 50 meters is because we have another setting up here somewhere. Pixels per meter for the Rapier Physics Engine is 1.0. So every pixel is one meter. That's why uh, this is 50 meters. And this having a density of 0 0.5, it's calculating, you know, as if this were a volume, this 50 meters were a, a volume of stuff. 
uh, what would be the mass based on this density. I didn't realize at this point either that actually you can do collider mass properties mass instead of density, which makes more sense for this, I think, for like setting the mass of a, a craft. I don't like I I have no interest in setting the density of a thing. But anyway, I did some maths here and that works out to roughly 3,926 kilograms or 3,927 if you round that up. Uh, velocity linear, so it's got a velocity component. Bevy uses this ECS uh, system. I shouldn't say system, should I? Because it's uh, entities, components, systems, system, where these are our entities. We're spawning our entities. And in this case, we're spawning it uh, based on a bundle of these uh, these component parts. These are our components. So the ship itself, the sprite bundle is separate from the ship, uh, although they're bundled together in this entity. And then the systems are run separately. And the way that systems work, if we go over to um, the ship flight system, this is doing a query. It's getting the time resource and uh, searching for the keys resource, which um, is how you input buttons. And then it's querying also for any objects, any entities in the world that have the ship and transform and velocity and external impulse components on them, uh, which in our case is just the ship, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, and then it's doing you know some maths and stuff on it. We have some dampening here. A lot of this code is like I understand it. I just um, I was basing a lot of the stuff early on on a another project called Catasta, which is another bevy game that has a similar sort of thing going on. And anyway, we'll dive over to 003 because as I say, 002 adds a bunch of stuff. 003 doesn't. All that 003 did was add um, uh, add the uh, GitHub workflow which we don't have yet, we just have docs, but we'll check out uh, version 003, because we may as well get check out 003. And once I do that, the release shows up here, and this is just releasing it for Windows, which is why I was able to uh, go into my GitHub and uh, download version 003, makes it a little bit easier to run more instantly. And we get this, a little ship, which if I press the buttons, I can move around. I'm using up or W to uh, to go forwards, and I'm just using left and right to turn it. The uh, the the reason it goes so slow because it is a very slow traveling spaceship, and it will be for a while. Um, the reason it goes so slow is because if we if we well if we send it off the screen, it doesn't reappear at the other side like asteroid style, because uh, I don't that's not a function I want for the game. So we've lost it now. It's just gone, just gone. It's going to be very difficult to like get it back. I've tried turning it around and pointing it in the right direction, but no, I think I think I've flown past the screen there. We're not getting it back. We're not getting it back. So that's why it goes slowly, is because if it went too fast, you'd lose it instantly. And I wanted it to be like it's just a demo, really. It's not a game, obviously. Nothing I've done yet is actually a game. <laughs> that's the thing. I've just been like building systems. Um but the systems get better and better all the time. So we'll move on. Because as I say, 002 did all of that. It made the ship and made it movable and it uh, put a camera in the world. And 003 only added the workflow so that it would release uh, and automatically on GitHub, in fact. So if you do go to github.com slash tombrew slash verse uh, slash releases, 003 is there, 004 and onwards are there. And from 005 onwards, there are Linux and Mac builds as well. So follow player for camera component is 004 and endless repeatable background. Okay, so it gets a little bit more interesting once we uh, check. Ooh, once that's the wrong place to be doing stuff. Where do I want to go here? Once we get check out 004, it's starting to get a little bit more interesting. This is why I didn't want it to be disappearing off the screen is because uh, if we can we just go back to verse, check out 004, is because I want the uh, the world to be well, I want the world to be galaxy size, as I say, eventually, but that's going to be a long way off. So what I've done here, this, this, the ship is moving faster now, too. It can move faster because the camera is following it. We're not going to lose the ship now because the camera is always matching the position of the ship. And we've got this, uh, this background that's just a very small repeating tile. Again, it's from the same pack. Uh, it's from the same Kenny pack. Um, you can see that in my assets. We've added the background here. Actually, there's this black one, but I decided that the stars were too faint, so I added a, a custom version where I've just brightened it up a bit. And uh, that made it a little bit more visible in the game. So this is my own variant of Kenny's 
black background asset. Uh, what was the interesting part at this point? I suppose it's the camera following, isn't it? So we still just have the main and ship components here. That means the camera stuff is in here, right? Yeah, follow player. So again, this is a system and it's running on every update. Ship flight system, follow player. These are running in parallel, by the way. That's something I have to figure out later on. I actually have done at this point. I figured out how systems work. There was a major bug, actually, at one point. We'll talk about that. Uh, and that sort of forced my hand in figuring out how to get systems to run one after the other. But the follow player logic is really simple. It just uh, finds the camera, which is querying for any object in the world with transform, but also with camera and without ship. So we're looking specifically for just the camera that has the transform component. And we're also finding the player transform as well with ship and without camera. So that's just the uh, the ship. We get the player transform here, player dot uh, single. This is just getting the player from this query. And uh, we're saying the position is going to be the transform dot translation of that player. As we say, we're getting the transform. And the translation is just its position in space, like its X, Y, Z position. Although we only concern ourselves with X and Y because it's a 2D sort of top-down game. Z is present, but it's used as sort of a Z index in Bevy. What's really cool about Bevy actually is like we could use the Z value to like do some pseudo 3D, even though we're using a 2D camera. Um, we can still have things go in front of and behind one another. I thought about doing this for like how the ship would orbit a planet. If you, if you like come at it and go straight across the planet, you should like orbit around it and come around the back. I'm not sure that I want to do that anymore. I've got a different system in place for like uh, the gravitational pull towards planets that I think I'm quite happy with. Um, but yeah, this is just then setting the camera transform translation.x to position x and camera transform translation.y to position y. Although there's probably a better way to do this. You know, this could be one line actually, thinking about it. I'm not going to change it here because this is obviously way back in the past, but we could probably do uh, camera transform.translation equals pause, right? Because it's just a VEC3. Yeah, camera transform expects a VEC3. So this is this is valid. And we could do that in one line instead of two. Um, which I didn't. But, you know, I didn't at that point know exactly what I was doing with this. Uh, VEC3, by the way, is just, it's like, it's like this. It's like, uh, it's the X, Y, Z position. So it's, um, it's like, okay, is it at 0 0.1 X, 0 0.1 uh, y, 0.1, Z, it's its position in space as a vector. Uh, so that's 0, 0, 004, right? Follow player for camera component and endless repeatable background. Yeah, not much to that at all. Let's go to 0, 0, 005. Git check out 0, 0, 005. What did we do on 0, 0, 005? Okay, we get some like visual stuff here now. We get some, uh, I'm adding a speedometer. And I'm adding a location indicator. The location indicator doesn't do anything at this point. I've also, yeah, I've started using the Ken Vector Future font, which is also from Kenny's assets. It comes with the same asset pack. Uh, we've set the window title to verse. And oh, yeah, uh, Mac and Linux builds are now part of the releases. We've also, that's right, yeah. OK, I think I said this uh, when I was talking about the ship, didn't I? We start, it's still back on main. God, I haven't organized anything yet. But yeah, instead of setting the density, I've started setting the mass. So it's directly set to that value that I calculated previously. Uh, like this could easily just be 4,000 instead, right? But there it is. We've set the mass directly. That's going to be more useful for us going forwards when we like add different ships because different ships could have different masses. And it, otherwise, we'd have to be like, okay, what's the size of it? And then what's the density of it in order to get the mass? And we'd be calculating it backwards. So it's just easy to set the mass. And I didn't realize that Collider mass properties had a mass at this point. But whenever you're unsure in, um, oh shit, I've deleted that. Uh, whenever you're unsure if there's like a certain thing existing on um, like a component in Rust, if you have Rust Analyzer installed, I think this is how it works. If you have Rust Analyzer, you can just do that and then it'll give you the options for like all the methods and all of the properties that you can add instead. Um, yeah, I think that's how I found mass in the end as well. As I say, I was brand new to Rust when starting this, and this is uh, this is me sort of figuring it out as I go along how to like work with it. Because the thing about Rust is, or particularly Bevy, um, I found it's not well documented online, but it is really well documented in the source code. So if you read the source for like most Rust crates, it's so well documented. 
in the code itself rather than like on a on a separate website. Um, so if you're a developer, you know it's uh, it sort of forces you into the source code a hell, a hell of a lot more than other languages would. But that's actually a really good thing. Um, yeah. So what do I say? The speedometer and stuff. Yes. So we'll take a look at uh, at zero zero five here. Go to verse. Go to zero zero five, and boot that up. And as you can see, we have in space and a little speedometer down there that's increasing as we zoom off. It's a little bit jittery. I think that's maybe because the frame rate is uh, like varying greatly, and I haven't like done calculations based on delta time yet. I still haven't. I, that's, that's on my to-do list. It's on my uh, 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 GitHub issues page. I need to like do these calculations for delta time. Which game developers, you know what I'm talking about. Um, anyone else who's like just interested, uh, delta time is the amount of time that has passed since the last update. So that might be like rather than like doing it every frame and saying we're going to move this distance every frame, you can say we're going to move this distance every second. So then we're decoupling it from the frame rate. And uh, that makes it, that smooths it out over time if, say, the frame rate is dipping up and down. Um, that's probably what the, the jitteriness is there. It might not be. It might be a, a like really badly optimized code. As I say, I'm not very good at this yet, but we're getting there. So we have a speedometer. And that's working using Bevy UI which was immediately super familiar to me because we're setting like absolute position. We're uh, describing the width and height of the element. We're using Flexbox, flex end, flex end, flex direction row. This is all super familiar for me because I'm a web developer. I come from a background in which I would use lots and lots of CSS. And these days you use lots and lots of Flexbox declarations. So this super familiar to me. As I say, we're using the Ken Vector future font. Um, Font size and color set there. Oh yes, and we have to add the UI speed component to the speedometer because we want to query it down here. Hood speedometer, this is the system that updates it. So we've got the uh, query for a text component with UI speed component. And we're also querying for the player velocity. So we get the velocity as a, well, yeah, we get the velocity here. And then we just set velocity.linvel, which is linear velocity, it's it's the velocity in like the direction we're heading. Uh, dot x direction dot power of 2.0 linvel y power of 2 square root of those truncate. Right, okay, yeah. So there might be a better way for me to like get this value actually. But this is calculating the speed in the direction for like any given direction, like diagonal, if it is. Otherwise, you get um, you get like you get close to like double the value if like you're traveling x and y certain amounts, and you just add them together. You know, you're gonna get like the x y value is gonna the diagonal value is gonna like explode and be far too big. Uh, and then we're just setting that as yeah, text section dot value. We're setting that as uh, as whatever this comes out to uh, with m slash s meters per second appended afterwards, because it is meters per second. As I say, one pixel is one meter. Um, and I think the top speed at this point is 1370 meters per second, which is, it would be fast for a for an Earth-based like aircraft. But it's pretty slow for a spaceship, I think. We need to, like later on, and I still haven't done this yet, we need to do like scaling I need to like think about like since I want to go galaxy scale with this, I need to think about like what's the scale of a solar system? What's the scale of the galaxy? Is it like full size? And how long should it take to traverse the entire galaxy? I'm thinking it should take a very long time to do that. And that's not something that's not like that's not like a core part of the gameplay. The core part of the gameplay is probably system to system rather than like one end of the galaxy to the other. There, there will be ways to like go faster between them, like wormholes or um I won't say the other thing I'm thinking of because it's sort of an Easter egg I want to drop in the game at some point, but there will be other ways to get around uh, like traveling very quickly from like one side of the galaxy to the other or getting between two points super quick. Teleportation. I want teleportation in the game too, uh, but I don't want to do like you can teleport wherever and whenever you like. I kind of like the idea of there being like a sender and a receiver. So you need to have like a receiver set up on one end to receive your teleportation. Um, signal essentially like a telephone right you need to have a, 
receiving part and a sending part. It will be instantaneous, but like there will be those two components. Um, so is that all the 005 had? Oh yeah, we also set the window title to verse and uh, we set the ship mass directly at this point. Don't know if I've shown that yet, but yeah, oh, I have. And uh, we decreased linear velocity dampening, faster max speed, slower natural deceleration. Okay, so the uh, the dampening for the ship is uh, is this bit here. This is just saying that every every single update uh, for elapsed time. There's delta seconds, by the way. I'm using it here, but I'm not using it down like here for the rest of the calculations of speed, and I need to like update that. Um, oh shit. Uh, so we we get the the time in delta seconds that have passed, and for say the linear velocity, we slow it down by this factor here for like every every tick of the update. We do that, and that's what results in when you let go of the controls, the ship slows down. Which I know I know that's not realistic in like space flight, but it is. I think well, it's all going to change eventually. I don't know what we're going to do. I think dampeners are important for gameplay but i think i might make them like a like a component that you can install on your ship yourself if you want it and if you want more realistic space flight you can just leave it off but i think by default it's what's going to be most comfortable because it's it stops you from like overshooting targets and stuff like that however it does also limit the speed at the moment to like 1370 meters per second and that's the main reason i've kept it around this long is because i don't want to go too fast because it sort of breaks things <laughs> breaks everything uh yeah, let's move on. 006, shall we? Git checkout, 006. Git, by the way, a super useful tool. If you want to get into game development, like learn Git first. Because this is all history, right? We're going forwards in history here. I'm checking out like version one, two, three, four, and you can see your code at any given point. Um, so what did six do? Oh, six, six changed something. Six made, I made a mistake early on. If we go to, yeah, I'll go back to 005. Um, and I'll show you what the license was at this point, and then we'll talk about the license um, that I changed it to. So at this point, yeah, it's called copying rather than license. And it is, okay, we'll, we'll ignore the top part for now. GNU general public license, GPL v3, right? So general public license version three, which uh, means that, uh, you know, you can uh, take the code and use it however you want, like even, uh, even for commercial purposes. And you, all you have to do is, because it was, I think it was um, a GPL v3. All you have to do is like have the same license. That's it. So you have to sort of share alike. It means like if you take any of my code and use it in your own project, you also have to license your code the same way, meaning anyone can take your code and use it in their project, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what I've tried to do here is append the commons clause uh, condition to the top of this, which essentially says like you cannot take the code, the game as is and just sell it. Because I don't want people to just like steal my game and sell it, you know. Um, but as it turns out, this commons clause is incompatible with this, the GPL, because of uh, one of the conditions in here. I, I, I can't remember which condition it is. It might be condition five. Uh, conveying non-source, conveying modified source versions. No, I don't know. But there's a condition in here that says like you can essentially ignore anything appended to this license, and this is. An append this is appended to the license so uh, that's why at this point when I go to uh, version 0.6 copying is deleted and we've changed it to license and from this point we are MIT licensed which is a more liberal license you can do whatever you want with it you can even uh, use it in like your own private source code you don't have to release your code under the same license uh, but it is commons clause appended and there's no condition here saying you can't do that with the MIT license. So this just says, you know, you, but you cannot take my game and, you know, as is, use it as is, right? For commercial purposes. You can like take any of the code you want and like build on it and work on your own projects using it, but you cannot just take it and like use it as is uh, commercially. And I think that's a fair clause to have and it is compatible with the MIT license, which is why I changed that there. And that's all that 006 is. Um, Sometimes you just make small changes. Sometimes, and we will see another one because there was a there was a bug fix that I had to get out really quickly. Uh, we'll see the bug as well soon. So we'll skip ahead. I want to do another video about licenses at some point because I think they are they're overlooked. And in particular, if you want to make a game and you've got no artistic skill uh, or you've got no no money, there are a lot of great free resources. But you do need to know uh, what 
the licenses those resources have mean. Uh, I think I might do a video about that at some point. Maybe call it something like um, how to make a game with no talent and no money. But anyway, 007 introduces the pause state. It also uh, installs something called Leafwing Input Manager, which we won't look at too much. It's just changing how I manage like user inputs. I've also added gamepad support. So at this point, you can also use a like a controller and left and right is on like the stick and uh, thrust is on R2 or you know the right trigger. Uh, so let's see 007 because there is something interesting worth looking at on 007, right? Here we go. Yes, speedometer. Ah, it was pause that we're going to look at. So if I hit P now, we pause and you can see everything about the game pauses. We've got uh, the meters per second isn't going down, still in space. Pause is flashing and like we're not moving in space. And that's it. We can unpause as well by pressing P or ESC. ESC also works to pause the game and just continue from there. So the way that works is I had to learn stuff about states to do this. So there's a new state file here. We've got an active state and a paused state and things like the ship flight system are now told, yes, yeah, they still run an update, but they run only if we're in the active state. And this this condition here, run if, I, it, run if in state, active state, is uh, it's on the speedometer as well, because, you know, that updates every tick of the game too. And it's on, it's on other systems too. Uh, so, yeah, what else? That's how pause works, essentially. We have, as I say, a state file here, has active and pause states. Uh, I now know how to use plugins in Bevy. So this is all done in plugins now. Main is probably a lot cleaner. Um, oh yeah, I've moved the uh, the follow player camera controls because I, as I say, we just moved it to a camera plugin instead. It's starting to get a bit more organized. It's going to get messy again, but it is going to get organized again after that. So um, there's also, yeah, the hood plugin, the ship plugin, state plugin, it's all there now. 008, if I, get, if I type this right. Get check out 008. We will go up to. We had a start menu. Okay, this is really cool. Yeah, we're just going to dive straight into the code at this point. Going to hear music for the first time. I've probably put some backing music on this video, but like we're going to hear like some actual in-game sounds for the first time. I wanted to do this nice and early because I wanted to figure out how to add sound to the game. Uh, so you're going to hear a couple of tracks. There's the. Start. I fucking love that man. I love the start menu. Uh, I, I'm really happy with that font. It's called Edge of the Galaxy. It's by... Okay, no music on the credits, but Edge of the Galaxy by Quinn Davis Type. The music you were just hearing was Lightspeed by Beat Mechanic. And what we're going to hear when we start up the game is Space Dust by Kirk Osameo. And those are both from the Free Music Archive with the CC BY, that's Creative Commons Attribution License, which means that uh, you can use it freely however you want but you do have to give attribution. You do have to like name where it came from, who made it, that sort of thing. Uh, so this is what I'm talking about. Like I'll do a video on licenses at some point, I think, because like I'm very well versed in that from like a background in um, web development. So we might do something like that. And we can just start the game from here. And as I say, we'll hear space dust, which is like this airy kind of ambient sound. I quite like. It won't be what all of spa all of space sounds like. Eventually, we'll have like um, like when you're in like enemy territory, we'll have like darker tracks, I think. But for like neutral space where there are no enemies, uh, I think it's I think it's fitting. It suits the sort of vibe. So yeah, I was really proud with the credits as well. We actually can't. The only way to exit the game right now is to alter for it or hit the X in the top corner. So we'll do that. Uh, I still still haven't fixed that. I still need to like add a way to get back to the main menu. But we're going to move on, because I think, unless there's something else on 008. Uh, yeah, start menu, start menu music, ambient music, credits. Download links added to readme. Pause system, move to pause module. Yeah, so we're organizing the code. Uh, and the, oh yeah, the menu and pause state blinking was moved to a new effects module. So I, I just moved the blinking out to a different module we can actually see the effects module here with just the menu blink system and it's just any uh anything that has the draw blink timer um any entity that has the draw blink timer we're going to make it hidden we're going to make it visible 
you know, based on that timer that it's got. But every tick of, you know, time, delta time, blah, blah, blah. That's, you know, just that's what's responsible for making the menu flash or the pause menu in particular flash. Uh, zero, zero, 009 then. Should we move on? We'll move on. I'm in charge. Uh, zero, zero, 009. What did we do for zero, zero, 009? Generalized state change handling with four state components and play menu music in credit state as well as start menu. Yeah, that's fixed. Okay. So you know when I started the credits uh, and we didn't hear any menu music? Well, 009 fixes that. And that was actually quite difficult to fix too because it just it had to... Um, well, I wanted to unload at this point when you start the game. That track has to unload. And the way I was doing that was by uh, by setting it to um, to unload when you exit the menu, the main menu. But of course, you're doing that when you go to the credits as well. And you're re-entering it when you come back into the main menu. Uh, and so I had to create a new, uh, a new state for that, I think. Generalized state change handling with four state components, yeah. Um, which is do, 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 probably in state. Yep, four states right there. So we have four state and it has a, a vector of states, well, a vec, uh, a, you know, some value of some amount of states that it can be for. And we have this despawn thing here that like, okay, if like four state does not match the current state, it'll remove it. So like, that means the music can be four state main menu and it can be four state credits and it won't be removed when it's, you know, going between those two states because they're both part of that collection. That's all that four state does. Like I say, kind of complicated, but uh, something you've got to do. Like it's all just figuring it out at this point. I've really liked working on the UI up to this point too. I think that's it, right? That's it. Yeah, we, we move on to 0010 now. Uh, if we can find the goddamn thing again. There it is. Look for the orange, Sean. Look for the orange. 0010 has. Ooh, yeah, this is interesting. This is good stuff. Yep. Yeah, I'm actually reading my changelog right now. And, uh, yeah, it's good. I'm wondering if we should, no, we'll, we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep loading up these versions of it. Um, although if we did at this point load up the dev version, we'd see something really cool. Uh, but it's just going to take a bit longer. So 0010. Ooh, I've not run this one. Okay. Run anyway. Gonna take a drink too. So nothing different about the menu. Uh, credits have changed. I've added pixel planets by default to the credits. And I think I can start the game from here. Yes, I can. And there we have it. We have a planet. We have a star. The planet is orbiting dangerously close, stupidly close to the star. But there's a reason for that. And that's about it. That's like all of the material changes. As I say, there is a dev change as well. Uh, in a later version, we're going to see like a uh, like a little uh, debug window up here that helps you like select different entities in the world. Uh, that was one major addition. The reason the planet is so close to the star, by the way, is because if I like fly off in this direction, you have exactly the same problem we had at the very beginning with like the ship. Um, you just can't find it. Like there's no indicator. There's no way to like get back to it. If we go like fly in this direction, how are we going to go back to the star and planet? Are we going to find them? Especially because the stars are a repeating background. You can't navigate using them. We're probably going to find them because I've not gone too far. Oh, no. No, no, maybe it's a bit further over here, actually. At this point, it's got to be down here, right? But you see how easy it is? It's just so easy to lose them. That's why I put the planet very close to the star. No, I've lost them. I've lost them. So that's what uh, that update does. And, like, there was nothing really new to learn at this point. Oh, look at this. Look at this mess of files here. <laughs> I've fixed this now. We do have a planet. We do have a star. We do have a planetary system which spawns the uh, yeah it spawns the star here sprite sheet bundle and uh, has animation indices so this I suppose I learned that I learned how to do animation based on a sprite sheet um, which do we have like that do we have that a separate module at all is it in effect no 
Where's Animate? Animate Sprite is here, yeah. So we're querying for anything with animation indices and an animation timer and a texture, like a texture atlas. And uh, for each tick of the clock, we are changing the index of the uh, the sprite atlas, like that. Like sprite index changes each frame that passes by to the next frame in the uh, in the sprite sheet. The sprite sheets, by the way, look like uh, celestials, like this. The load, there it is. So you can see all the different. Uh, iterations, all the different frames of the star, same for the planet, all the different frames of the planet as it ro sort of seemingly rotates in space. These are from um, Deepfold's Pixel Planet Generator. You can find it on itch.io. It's really good. I don't want to do it this way eventually, because as I say, I want it to be a galaxy scale game. So we're going to need some sort of procedural generation instead of just having like, what? Like a billion sprite sheets? That's too many. There's too many. We're going to have to do some sort of procedural generation. I haven't figured out how that's going to work yet, but uh, we'll get there. So yeah, this is still, it's still a bit of a mess in here, but it's, 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 uh, at least it's using modules and it's using plugins. So it's at least a little bit tidy. Uh, anything new? Yeah, just the planetary system. Spawns the planet, spawns the star. They don't even have gravity yet. Although actually, yes, they do orbit. So the planet orbits the star but it's just this code here. It's just drawing a circle. So yeah, we get the cos and sine, uh, the cosine for the um, for the x value and the sine for the y value. And this is calculating its position for any given time on a circle that's drawn around the star, but it's, it's not affected by like, distance from the star or gravity or anything like that. So, you know, it's the only thing it's affected by is radius. Oh, and... Uh, I think because I do this part, semi-major radius, semi-major axis, uh, square root. I think because I do that part, it does move. Yeah, the closer it is to the star, the faster it's going to complete an orbit. But it is going to move slower in space relative to something that's farther away. Um, if that makes sense, you know, planets farther away are going to move much quicker in space, but they're going to complete an orbit slower because the the orbit's so much bigger. Um, Anyway, these are terrible orbital mechanics and completely wrong. They will be changed. Was this 0, 010, by the way? It was 0, 010. Okay, and as I say, I did a, I, I did a sort of dev mode thing, a World Inspector plugin that we'll take a look at when we get to the, uh, the final thing. So, 0, 011. This is the version with the bug. So, get excited, man. Get excited. Uh, Git, check out 0, 011. And we will take a look at what we did here. Moon orbiting planet demonstrating new orbital system. Fantastic. Indicator system added to the hood. Oh, yes. Okay, fantastic. We did that nice and quick. Source and license info added to the credit attributions. Yeah, we'll check a look at the credits in a section. Optional pixelation shader for retro effect and optional chromatic aberration shader. I was experimenting with shaders at this point, but I didn't like the effect. So I made them like, I kept them, the code in the game, but I, I made them completely optional. We might take a look at those at the very end. Generalized orbital system for any spatial coordinates and parent bodies. Okay, yeah, so it's no longer orbiting the center. In the previous version, I had it orbiting like the central point. That is to say the uh, zero, zero, the origin of the world. And in this uh, in this version, we're now orbiting around a parent body if the if the planet has a parent body, that being the uh, the star. Uh, so I must set that on the, I must set that on something when I'm spawning it, right? But this is not where we spawn them. Planetary systems where we spawn them. Uh, yeah, spawn demo orbital. So the yes, okay, that's why it was required actually, because we added a moon. I just called it demo orbital, demo orbital for now, because um, like none of this is really final. This is just me sort of experimenting. I use the meteor sprite, which is again from Kenny's assets, and um, I give it a parent of the planet. So we'll check out version eleven over here. And you'll be able to see a little you'll be able to see a little moon orbiting the the planet. We won't check out the credits just yet. We're gonna go straight into the game. And we're gonna go find the planet because it's now way off here. With a little indicator pointing to it, so that we don't lose it. The star also has an indicator. Showed up just now. There you are. Hello. As I say, there's no gravity for the ship yet, but there is this sort of fake gravity for the the moon orbiting the planet here, and you can see it's moving relative to the planet. It's drawing a 
counterclockwise circle around the planet. And if we want to, I can go back and find the star, because I've got an indicator on screen in the bottom corner there. Oop, there it goes. It moves up above me now. There it is. So yeah, the indicator system, I love the indicator system. It's so useful. But as I say, version 0011 has a bug, a uh, pretty major bug, whereby if we start the game and we go to the credits, the star has spawned. If we leave the credits, uh, it now looks like this. And I think if we try to start the game from here, it'll crash to desktop. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the problem there is me not understanding how like um, states work and how like uh, how the stages in Bevy work, stepping between different stages. So in order to try and, because I had to have the, I had to have the star spawn before the planet and the planet spawn before the moon because like they need their parents to exist before they can exist. Otherwise it was crashing. So I, I did this. I, I separated into three separate systems at three separate schedules. So when we exit the start menu, we spawn the star. But of course, the start menu is separate from the credits, which is why once we exited it to the credits, we spawned the star and we shouldn't have. Um, when we create the game, on enter create game, spawn planets and on exit create game, we spawn the demo orbital. This should not be the case. Like, this should all be part of the game create state. Uh, instead, I've separated them out like this because I didn't know how to like get things to order properly. So as I say, 0 0.0.12 is a really small update. It's just got one note in my changelog, and it's to implement a buffer to prevent crash to desktop. We'll check that out uh, now. 0 0.0.12. Uh, there it is, yeah. Completely changed. So now when we on enter app state game create, we spawn star. Then we apply deferred, which I'll explain in a second. Then we spawn planets. Then we apply deferred. Then we spawn demo orbital. And we chain those. And this is the really important bit. Chain makes it so that these run in this order rather than in parallel. So instead of spawning star and trying to spawn demo orbital at the same time, we, we do them in that order, in the order they're stated here. And apply deferred just sort of adds a buffer to it. So it's like, make sure this step is finished before continuing to this step. That means that when we try to spawn the planet, the star does exist, the planet can have a parent, etc., etc., And that's just how that works. And this, I had to find this out so quick because as I say, that was a pretty major bug and it made it into a release. And I only noticed it after like downloading the version and being like, oh, oh shit, what have I done? Uh, so I, I got a like a 0012 release out really quick. What else did we have? on 0011. Oh yeah, the shaders, which I said we'll make look at at the very end, but yeah, let's move on. 0013, because uh, as I say, 012 was just a bug fix. We can take a look at 0012 if you want. Um, again, I'm in charge. We'll take a look. And shit, I said don't run, haven't I? I said don't run instead of more info, run anyway. Thank you. And then yeah, if we do go to credits, now the star is not spawning. And we do hit enter, everything's fine. It's it's stopped the stopped the crashing. I think 0013 might be where I uh fixed the indicator system. Am I right about that or am I wrong? Uh any new credits? Nope. Okay, so Yes, indicator system. The indicator system is now drawn in a circle close to the ship rather than like at the edge of the screen. Uh, the reason I did this was because I thought it was like... At the edge of the screen, they were moving too fast, right? And when they hit the corners, it wasn't very clear, like, where it was roughly, like, relative to the ship. Whereas with them, like, drawing a circle around the ship like this, I think it's a lot clearer where you have to go to to find your next, um, your next planet, your next objective or anything. I've also, at this point, added a couple more sprites. Once again, these are from the uh, Pixel Planet Generator, I think. Uh, if we just get there, and it's another animated sprite. It is another animated sprite from the Pixel Planet Generator, yes. And this is uh, just a little rocky planet. So we're slowly getting there. Do we have gravity? I don't think we do, do we? No, that's just going to move off on its own. Okay. Bye-bye, planet. So yeah, indicator system and a couple more 
uh, orbital you know planets in order to demonstrate the indicator system, the new indicator system working. That's all that 0013 was. Uh, yeah, I've got in my changelog notes like the new sprite ship with a new planet. KD tree search for nearest neighbor using bevy spatial. That's interesting, isn't it? We should take a look at that if we can find it. Where would I have used KD tree? Um, to find the nearest neighbor. Oh, did I add like... My code is still badly organized. I'm not actually sure. Let's do a, a quick search for KD tree and see if we can find... Okay, I probably called it KD node, right? Nope, I did not. I probably used the orbitable value. Planetary system. Hmm. I'm not sure where that code is, but I do have something in uh, in place now called a KD tree search, which is uh, registering like all of the planets in a sort of tree, and uh, it can traverse that tree, it can search that tree for like the nearest thing to a given point in space. So we can determine, oh, I know exactly what it's doing, actually, it's the indicator system. Uh, so yeah, if we go to the indicator system, it's not the indicator system, sorry, it's the, um, it's something to do with HUD. God damn it, where is it, man? <laughs> it's, yeah, again, it's like really... I do not have a HUD. Huh. Here we go, HUD, indicator, no, mod, here we go. It's for this. Where is it? I should just show you it, shouldn't I? In space. Oh no, because we're not using it yet. Am I reading the right thing? Have I not checked it out? I've not checked it out. Idiot. There we go, 13. Okay, so, uh, yeah, here we are. We're in the right place anyway. So, um, yeah, like I say, we added this UI location to the location part of the hood. And if we scroll down, we have this current location system that is, you know, querying for that and for the tree, which is the KD tree uh, of all orbitables. So anything that's got an orbitable, it will be in this tree. And we're looking for the nearest one to the player. So tree dot nearest neighbor to the player translation. That's the player position. Uh, for that, we're just updating the text of the uh, the UI location part. We're updating it to near, and then the name, uh, the name of the planet. I think it's the name of the planet. We'll run zero zero thirteen again and see. But I'm pretty sure it's the name of the planet. So yeah, we're near the star. Uh, you can see in the top right corner. And as we go out and get closer to the planet, near planet, yeah. So it updates and it tells us where we are in space. That's going to be useful in the future for like determining whether you're in orbit around it, whether you're like under its gravitational influence, whether you've like, um, and just it's going to probably going to be like a messaging system for like, uh, like, oh, there's a spatial anomaly here, like find it or something like that. Um, anyway, that's zero zero thirteen. Yeah, it doesn't add a lot more than that, I don't think. Uh, it does do a lot of organizing. I, I'm seeing that in my changelog. All those files are now separated into like different uh, module folders, like astronomy is where the planets are, uh, HUD is where indicator and the UI systems are, effects are animate and blink now. Uh, the menus are in here. Credits is separate from pause, is separate from start menu, but they're all considered menus. So it's just me trying to reorganize my code a bit better. So it's a bit easier to find and navigate around. Uh, anyway, that's not that interesting really, is it? 14. We will go to uh, 0014, which adds a simple gravitational impulse attracting ship to orbitables. And uh, I added a new component. Yeah, okay. I, added, I was searching for KD you know, just a moment ago. KD node is what replaced orbitable because I wanted it to be, I wanted to be able to add KD node to anything for like, is it nearby? It shouldn't just be an orbitable thing. Like you shouldn't be able to orbit a, like a, an enemy ship, for example. Um, but it should still be uh, in the tree that determines whether it's like closest to player and whatnot. Uh, anyway, 0014 adds simple gravitational impulse. We'll check this out. It's the one thing it does. And I think 0015 might be the last one that I have to uh, run through today. And then I've got to get back to work on improving it. There it is. Yeah, 
there's the gravitational impulse. I haven't touched a button yet, uh, but I've been attracted to the star there. If we go out to a planet, I believe, same thing will happen. We're near the planet now. Eep. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Keep it on screen is the main thing. If I let go of the controls, I'm now still accelerating towards the planet. Uh, and we'll go past it and we'll bounce back and it will ultimately come to rest at zero. And then the game will break because it's dividing by zero. I'll show you. Oh my god. Where do we uh, divide by zero? I won't show you it happening because it'll take too long, but... Well, you might see it. You might see it. It might take me too long to find this. World? Yeah, I've reorganized the code again. So world astronomy. And I think it is... No, don't I have... Yeah, player dynamic orbit. Here it is. So we have dynamic orbital positioning system. It's just finding the closest neighbor in the tree. And if it's a certain distance from that, uh, then it will apply an impulse towards the uh, towards the planet, essentially, right? Uh, so this is the part that gets the yeah the ship and we apply an impulse to it heading towards the object there. And where are we dividing by zero? Or are we not? From nav, player translation, translation xy, position entity, nearest neighbor to the player. Uh, if the player distance is less than 1500 pixels or 1500 meters, then apply this impulse position minus player translation dot normalized times 2000. Okay, I don't know where the division by zero is. It's not here. Or is it? No, at some point there's a division by zero error, and like uh, once it comes to rest at like zero zero, it will be flung off into like deep space at infinite speed. Uh, well, at not a number speed. If you're a programmer, you know exactly what not a number is, or you don't. We don't. We don't know what it is. It's just not a number. That's all we know. The problem with it uh, at this point is like if we go to a further out planet, these are moving faster. Like I said, in their orbits, so. It like, it's particularly obvious on the very last one, but I think this one's kind of far away. Because it's moving so much faster uh, than the planets close to the star, the further out you get, the less impact that impulse has, so it doesn't quite catch up to the planet as you're moving. I actually put this one really far away to demonstrate this, didn't I? Yeah. So this one is, uh, this, this planet is particularly far away. We're taking our time to get to it. But once we do get to it, which I have no idea how far away it is, actually. Come on, you've got to be close now, right? Once we do get to it, here it is. We uh, will slow down. Oh, it's going so fast it hasn't really appeared on screen yet. Where are you, man? It's re it really is just going too fast. There it is, 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 there it is. So if I just hang out here and try to, like, get it to capture my gravity, capture me in its gravity, sorry, then are we gonna, are we gonna make it or is it going too fast? Uh, it might disappear off screen, and if it does, that's roughly the distance we apply it at. But you can see the difference. You can see like how much faster that's traveling through space than the others, and therefore how like the impulse um, doesn't manage to capture the ship. Uh, that's because like nothing has mass yet, and as I say, the orbital system sucks, which is why for the final one we want to check out today, zero zero fifteen. We have changed the orbital system, right? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, okay. And a lot of this is borrowed code. I've just gone through and I've modified it from someone else who did sort of the same thing. I can't remember. Hang on, I've got like a, I've got no, a note at the top. I don't know. I'd be able to find this pretty easily. But this code does come from uh, someone else who did the same thing. I think it's... Oh, it's bevy. It might be. Bev it might be called bevy orbitable, be bevy orbital, or something like that. Or, but yeah, it was a it was a bevy plugin for doing orbits, and the code that they'd written wasn't uh, fit for my purposes. Like they were doing, uh, they were working with the x and z axis instead of the x and y, which I needed for two D. Um, but yeah, now the further a planet is from the star. We go and we look at version 0015 here, 0015, sorry. 
Uh, the further a planet is from the star, the slower it will now move. And there are actually more planets too. Oh, there's, wait, there's more here too, actually. We'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, if we go to the closest star, uh, planet here, it's going to be moving quite slowly relative to the star, but it's going to have... It's going to be able to capture me. Uh, you've already seen the Earth-like planet that's down there, so we're going to ignore that and go further out. There's, there's a lot of planets now. There's like... Well, there's eight, because I'm, I'm planning to, like, one of the next things I want to do is model the solar system. So these should be, like, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And, you know, I mean, maybe I'll throw in Pluto. But if I throw in Pluto, I've got to throw in Ceres and uh, Maki Maki and etc., don't I? So here we go. So if we... It, this, this planet's pretty far out, but you can see it's not moving as quickly as... The planet was that was far out from the star previously we're attracted to it more slowly the orbits are a lot more realistic in uh in fact that they're they're realistic to the point that i don't think they like go out of step with reality like for two thousand years they're obviously still very close to the star only a few thousand meters rather than like at like planetary scale i still as i say I need to like work on scaling this for the solar system and then the galactic scale but uh the orbitals are a lot better now. Uh, yeah. And as you can see up in the top left as well, we have the date. 2724, March 14th, at uh, just after 8am. Um, that's real time, so it is one minute per minute right now. I might change that. I'm thinking about going for like Grand Theft Auto's sort of scaling system, where... Well, back in GTA 3, actually, it was like one minute was every second. But by GTA 5, they'd started doing, I think, every three seconds was a minute instead. But like I say, there's lots and lots that I do need to figure out scaling-wise. Other things that I've changed on 0015? Ah, let's see. Current time display in the hood. Set initial time to 8am March 14th, 2724. We've added extra planets. There are now eight in the star system. And a mass component is used in orbital calculations. Yeah, so it's now using the mass of the star to determine, like, how far... Well, it's actually using the mass of the planet as well for that little moon orbital. Um, it's using the mass of the parent body in calculations to determine, like, how fast its orbit should be for its distance from the star. And that's just more accurate, more realistic. We replaced the really simple orbital system with a Kepler-based one to do some equations to determine, like... Um, the position for a given time in an elliptical orbit now rather than a circular one. And uh, on account of that, I also had to change the orbital period scaling factor. So that's important. So it's not quite like true to life because I have this value up here, the orbital period scaling factor, uh, which you can see is a very tiny number. I've had to use uh, like scientific notation to, to describe it. It's a very tiny number. And it's uh, multiplying every orbital step by that, essentially, because otherwise they are so close to the sun and the sun is so massive that uh, they go crazy fast around it. If we change this value, it's it's nuts, right? So um, since 15 is the latest, I don't see a reason why I can't... Yeah, go back to main here. Get check out main. And we get right back up to present day, the uh, current working state of the project, which has uh, changed one thing that you're going to notice, and that's the uh, the font that I use. I wanted a font that had more symbols, so I've switched out Ken Vector for a font called Zelonium. Zelonium by... We'll check the credits in a second, actually. I want to cargo run this, and you're going to see the, uh, the debug window now as well, because I'm running it in dev mode, because this isn't a release build yet. This is, uh, this is all coming in a future update. There's no gameplay yet still though, so it's not worth it. It's not worth downloading. But uh, I do have an idea for some like simple gameplay that I might implement pretty soon. Um, as I say, yeah, it can take a little second, so I'm gonna take a drink. And there it is, verse once again. Zelonium font is by Severin Maya. It's from Font Library and it is open font licensed. Or it has the open font license. So uh, that's the uh, that's the info there. As you can see, the world inspector is here. 
And I can use this to like, um, uh, what should we look at? Start menu. We can change its style if we want, like, um, just increase its width. There we go, look. It's moving the menu about. Yeah, just leave it at 100, thank you. And uh, I don't think there's anything else new at this point, really. Was there something I started going? Yeah, I was going to show you the font change, that was it. So, I don't know how much I love this compared to the other font that I was using. But this one does have more symbols, and I wanted more symbols because I want to add a currency to the game, and I want it to have a currency symbol. So I've switched out for Zelonium in order to do that. But this, this is Verse. This is uh, this is my game project. I'm making, uh, yeah, I'm making my dream game, and it's uh, it's it's fun. I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I don't think this will ever be finished. I think this is some some going to be something that I like work on forever and gradually iterate on and like add more to eventually it's gonna as i say have a have a story in there i in fact what have i done another thing i've done recently i've, I've completely changed the docs so there is um where are where, 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 where are the docs there they are it's the docs i have an easter eggs folder i'm planning to add easter eggs it is not committed into the repository it is in fact very specifically git ignored so that uh there are no spoilers about Easter eggs. There, of course, with the assets being in the directory like this and it being like source available on GitHub, you'll always be able to figure out like um, like the story I've written and like the stuff. So like if you're never wanting spoilers, obviously you'd never check this out. But like for anyone else that does want to check out the code, uh, you totally can. And um, yeah, I got to go work some more on it. I got like I've got some. Big ideas. I want to add ship interiors so you can live in your ship. I want to add, um, as I say, some gameplay. I want to add planetary landings eventually. Oh my god. Uh, that's going to be tough. We're going to need, like, that's the reason I, I'm not fully settled on, like, the pixel planet generator is because I need to have, uh, like, be able to generate the surface of a planet as well. And I'd kind of like it to match the, the, the view of it from space, if possible. So I got a lot of that to figure out. Um, going to be a long time working on this I think but that's it that's what I've been up to and that's why I've not updated my channel in a bit anyway thank you so much for watching this um whatever in fact this is I didn't want the change like I wanted to read me thank you for watching this verse preview I guess um devlog001 sorry I'm really tired man I, I I just I've just gone over so much information there. Thanks for watching and uh catch you in the next one. Ta-ra.